Good morning. Today we are going to talk to Dr. Celesta Kemper, a researcher in the Department of Economics and Finance. Welcome, Dr. Celesta. Thank you so much for having me. Doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Okay, so in my early career days as a junior lecturer, I was privileged uh, to become involved in a research pro project of one of the senior lecturers in the department, um, Dr. Louis Bortma. Um, he was doing a research study on the impact of the minimum wage on the employment of domestic workers. And the, resu the results from that study um, resulted in my first published journal article as a young academic. Now that was in 2002, um, and the area of our research was in labor economics. Um, it's now 20 years later, and labor economics is no longer the field of um, interest for my research. But it was that exposure and that involvement that piqued my interest um, as a researcher. Today, my research interests are focused on um, my studies, my PhD studies, uh, which is in the field of behavioral economics. Um, and those studies I did under the leadership, or the sterling leadership rather, of Professor um, Fricky Boyson and Professor Silvias Kuberi. Thank you, Doctor. And then, can you tell us what are you currently working on? So, I currently have three projects I'm working on. Um, two of these projects are from my PhD studies. So, my PhD studies was in the Nobel field of behavioral economics. And I say Nobel because it's a relatively new field in economics. Um, behavioral economics employs insights from psychology and sociology to better understand why human being, beings make economic decisions. And economics, in its purest form, for a long time made assumptions that human beings are rational beings and that we selfish or self-interested beings. Now, behavioral economics relaxes these assumptions a little bit. And in short, it helps us to better understand um, why humans make the decisions that they do by treating people as human beings, like a psychologist would, and not as an e economic unit, like e e economists would. So the first project I'm working on relates to um, altruism, which is a measure of pro-sociality. Um, and the project focuses on how altruism differs between lab and field subjects. Most of the behavioral economic studies and experiments done in the past have only focused on lab subjects. Um, and in my project, I have decided to not only include students as lab subjects, but also non-students. And particularly, um, I used staff from the UFS in, in, in my studies. Um, and so the findings of that project will be presented at an international conference in Nice, France. Um, during the first week of June, which is next week. Then the second project, which is also from my PhD studies, um, focuses on identifying and understanding social subject types based on traits such as greediness, fairness, trustworthiness, egalitarianism, um, and altruism. And in this study, I used economic experiments such as the um, ultimatum game, trust game, and the social discounting task. And the findings of this study are also penned to be presented at an, another international conference in Florence in Italy um, during the 6th to 9th of July of this year. And then my third most ambitious, <laughs> probably most ambitious project that I'm currently working on Professor Guguliru and I are in the process of establishing a behavioral economic cluster within the Department of Economics and Finance. So the purpose of the cluster is to focus on, firstly, to um, apply for uh, funding uh, and to recruit um, postdoc fel fellows 
and postgraduate students who are interested in um, behavioral economics as a field. And then also our other purpose is to establish international links with other international universities so that we can advance this new field of behavioral economics in the South African context. Um, and by doing so, we hope to make a meaningful contribution to the field of economics um, at the University of the Peace State. Thank you so much, bro. And then what uh, is the purpose of social discounting rates in economics? Okay. So uh, social discounting rate um, measures sociality. It measures um, people's um, concern for the welfare of others. And we measure that, or it's referred to also as altruism, um, and we measure that making use of an economic experiment called the social discounting tool, or the STT for short. Um, but it's aimed at measuring people's uh, pro-sociality or their concern uh, for the welfare of others. Thanks. Are there any exciting gaps within your field? Um, yes, there are several gaps. Um, I'll mention two for now. The first gap is that um, because behavioral economics makes use of economic experiments such as the social discounting tool, um, they mainly recruit student subjects as their participants um, because it's convenient to recruit student That's subjects. Right, yes. um, so there's definitely a gap in the sense that these studies need to be replicated with real people as well in real everyday settings, which is what I've done uh, with, my first, with my first project. And then the second gap also is that these experiments cost money. Um, and most of these experiments or most of these studies using these experiments have been um, done in the weird countries. So weird stands for Western, um, educated, industrial, rich, democratic countries. So in other words, the global north. Um, so there's definitely a need for these studies to be replicated in non-weird countries such as South Africa, which is also something that I'm currently busy with. So using the staff member of UFS as your sample, yes. did you use only academics or even support staff? The academic and support staff. So we, rec we um, recruited subjects by distributing flyers. Um, but these flyers were mainly distributed in the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences, but it was not just limited to academic staff, both uh, support and academic staff uh, were invited to participate in the, in the projects. Okay. And then, what message can you give to aspiring researchers? Um, I think the first thing I would say is to find people to work with who are passionate about research and who are more experienced researchers. You know, as, an, as a young academic, it's, it's often daunting to think that you have to put, pursue research on your own. And in the beginning, we really need someone to hold our hands. So I would advise young researchers, don't be shy to get involved in a research project within your department. And don't be scared to ask, you know, the more experienced researchers how you can get involved and, you know, how they can guide you or mentor you along your research uh, um, journey. A uh, research journey doesn't have to be a lonely journey. Um, I find that the most valuable research um, journeys are those that you are able to pursue if you collaborate with other like-minded researchers. And in the second piece of advice I would say is don't just do research for the sake of doing research. Find something you're passionate about and do research in that. Um, I'm an economist by profession, but I've always been passionate in understanding how people think and why they make the decisions that they do. So behavioral economics gave me that opportunity to treat, to incorporate the psychology uh, with economics in order to better understand um, human economic decision making and, um, and that's why I enjoy the research now because it's, it's related to something I've been, been passionate about for a long time. Thank you, Doctor. And then, apart from research, what are your interests? 
Um, I'm also very passionate about teaching. I love teaching. I love teaching big groups. I love teaching small groups. Um, I love interacting with students in the classroom environment and, you know, transferring knowledge to them and watching them grow. I feel there's, you know, for me it's very rewarding to watch my students cross the stage on the Kaliiman when they graduate, knowing that somehow I contributed to their um, success as a student. Um, I don't have much time uh, for hobbies um, and other interests. I've also, besides being a researcher and an academic, I've also got four kids. Uh, but I do love gardening and reading. Um, and then if this time, I love a good Netflix series as well. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing with us, Doctor. And we wish you all the best in your new uh, endeavors. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.